Hey buddy Crow back again and I'm doing something I haven't done in a really long time and that's a pickups video. I've been getting some stuff in the mail that I've pre-ordered and some other stuff that I've bought and I've just gotten in the mail and I've kind of just shoved it aside just because I've been so busy and that's just been going on for weeks and I think even months in some cases. I've had more work to do than usual. Uh, so I've had less time to play games. And when I do play those games, I'm playing, you know, stuff on the Evercade and Pinball FX. And on the weekends, I've been working on projects around the house. And that's what I would be doing right now, except it's raining outside. So I can't really do that. So I figured, hey, let's go through all the stuff that I've been collecting, open it up, and uh, I'll just make a video. Why not? So before we get to the games, I'm going to start out with this um, Turbo Views. If you're not familiar what this is, there's a YouTube channel, Spida A1, and this is Chris, Chris Bucci, and he does this series, uh, Turbo Views, where he reviews every single TurboGrafx-16 game. And this is something he started like over a decade ago, and he actually just recently finished it, and he's been putting them out on DVDs. Uh, in volumes, and this is the last volume. Now, I, I, uh, this isn't the DVD itself, but this is a case, a container, to hold all the volumes, and I thought it was really cool that he did this in the style of a, like, mini Turbo Graphics 16 box, except he put, you know, obviously Turbo Views and everything on there. So, um, I don't plan on opening this and closing this up that often, but he was, you know, worried about everything wearing out on this cardboard. But I think it's fantastic, to be honest. He was also saying, don't bend it backwards like that, like I just did. But <laughs> but let's see here. We got the um, chapter index for the complete DVD series. See, I could have just bought the, the last volume, but I wanted to get this case too. But you could also buy this case with all five DVDs as well. So I guess he's got the chapter index for every single one of of those and then he put here's the 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 fifth volume he put a little bow around it and let's see here it says it's uh number five out of 175 so i guess uh there's 175 of these and this is the fifth one but yeah let's see here yeah we got uh looks like this this is uh well look at this four dvds in this set here there's that and there's plenty of padding in here but don't need that anymore because with this box set I can put in the other volumes that I've already had for such a long time already. So volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four. To complete everything, volume five. We can throw that in there and then we can throw all this on top of there and close it up. There we go, all five volumes, everything, turbo views in this box and I thought that was really nifty. I can't even remember how much I paid for this. Okay, I had to look it up, but it was around $42 for just the box set and the fifth volume. I and mean, I think it was close to $100 for the everything that's in this box right now. And before we get on to any other games, my wife actually did get me this, this uh, mini uh, Atari 2600 Tiny Arcade. Now, I was aware of this thing, but I wasn't going to buy it just because not all of the games on here were like Atari 2600 versions of the games. There's some uh, odd things on here I feel like Pong um, and like it looks like the arcade version of Warlords and Tempest and Asteroids instead of the 2600 version so that's kind of odd so let's uh let's open this up really quick and see what this is like I, I, I figured that this is going to spend most of this time just on display anyway all right it's almost like they don't need to get this out so we got the TV it's got a little fold out legs Oh, that I can't really get at. Oh, look, we got to pull out the battery there. Here we go. Fold out little legs there. And I know the screen kind of comes out so you can angle it better so you can see it, I guess. <laughs> Looks like we got a little joystick. There we go, a little joystick. I'm not making this a fancy video or anything, but yeah, there's our little Atari 2600. And I know this is a button. So I guess we could turn this on. See what we got there. Presenting the world's smallest tiny arcade press to start oh the button on the joystick is showing so i guess this is a little neat there we go and there's our games we got asteroids breakout centipede combat millipede missile command pong tempest did i already rotate them i don't know there's pac-man at least they i think they put the atari 2600 version of pac-man on here okay yep <laughs> There we go. That's the right version of Pac-Man to put on there. I guess this is a little bit cooler than I thought it would be. <laughs> so what does this do then? Okay, that takes that button takes you back to the main menu. But like the Asteroids, why would they put the arcade version of Asteroids on here? 
and it's um it's not even moving that great so I mean the games on here are hit and miss I mean maybe this is better than technically better than the Atari 2600 version but it doesn't seem right that this is the version on here oh look how choppy that is it's definitely not it's like everything moves in increments it's not smooth at all but it's it's it is playable you know because it's moving so slow centipede again it's like the arcade version of centipede which is weird and it's not quite playing the same way centipede does combat this I, okay this has got to be the yeah this is definitely but combat's really a two-player game so i guess you're stuck fighting against the cpu but i guess how many different variations have we got in there okay so i got tank visibility missile guidance play field select so yeah you got all the different variations of combat um millipede this is the arcade version too of missile command again this is like the arcade version or is it no this has got to be the 2600 version but it's or a hybrid of sorts because this doesn't seem like either Pong, obviously, Pong was never on the 2600. It was Video Olympics. But again, it's it's moving so slow that it's a bit playable, choppy. Tempest, again, this probably... But you know what? These are more playable than they probably should be. Warlords, again, the arcade version. So it seems like the only 2600 game in here, aside from combat, is Pac-Man. So I don't know why they just didn't put the Atari 2600 versions in here. But you know what? I will say that these are certainly more playable than I thought they would be. I'm having no problem with that, uh, even though this is a paddle game, controlling this with a joystick. All right, let's move on. All right, for the rest of the pickups, most of it is limited run stuff, but there are a handful of things that aren't limited run. And we'll start with this one, which I actually just picked up yesterday, Capcom Fighting Collection. Now, I've been looking forward to this one just because it has all of the Darkstalkers games on it. It's got Darkstalkers, Night Warriors, Vampire Hunter, Vampire Hunter, wait. Oh, Vampire Hunter 2, Vampire Savior, Vampire Savior 2. But then it's also got one Street Fighter game on here, Street Fighter 2, uh, the Anniversary Edition, which is one that hasn't been released before, I believe. Uh, Red Earth, uh, Super Gem Fighter, uh, Cyberbots, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2. So technically this one's not a fighting game, but it kind of is. It's a puzzle game. So these are all like fantastic game so i had to get this one i don't think that any of these require a download for the switch i think everything's on the cartridge there's no mention of that anywhere on here but after i film this i'm probably going to jump pop in every single one of these games just to try it out and i'll leave a note in the video if it does require any sort of download other than maybe an update so i do want to open all this stuff up just so we can see what's inside. I'm not really expecting much inside of this one. So yeah. Oh, look at this. There kind of is a uh, something. <laughs> These days I'll count this as a manual. <laughs> so uh, bonus music and artwork on the back. So let me see what that is. Yeah, there's a little code on there for me to use. So apparently I'll get some uh, music and artwork on here. So that's actually, I didn't even know that. that that's actually better than nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking for to trying this one out. So Capcom Fighting Collection. This is actually from Strictly Limited. I got Death Smiles 1 and 2. I had Death Smiles 1 on the Xbox 360 and um, I don't know if Death Smiles 2 actually ever came out here and I'm not really playing the Xbox 360 version anymore so I uh, I thought this was a good thing. I don't really know how much this was. The Capcom Fighting Collection was a $40 game so there's that. Um, since it was Strictly Limited it came with that sticker not really seeing where I'm putting anything. It came with like these two postcards too. And see, I, now that I'm looking at it, it's like the same postcard twice. So I wonder if they accidentally put <laughs> the same two of these in my box instead of one. So that's, that's interesting. But let's open this up and see what Strictly Limited gave us. All right, let's open her up. But look at, we do have a manual. That's the nice thing about, you know, like Strictly Limited and Limited Run and Premium Edition. They have a tendency to give you the complete uh, box experience, including a, uh, a manual, so it's nice. And, you know, it doesn't even matter what's in it. The, the, uh, the fact is they put the effort in to put it in here. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the Smiles Horizontal, weird shoot 'em up uh, That's kind of why I like it. It's kind of an oddball shoot 'em up All right, so I did get a lot of limited run stuff. But before I get to the games, I kind of wanted to point out that I did buy um their binder the hold the trading cards and then i bought a couple of uh, packs of trading cards when they became available including this 
hobby box that included 27 cards uh, because I kind of like the idea of collecting these cards, even if I don't have the game. So yeah, I did uh, sort through them. I put the cards in. I mean, even the cards for the games that I'm about to show you are in here, um, like Super Meat Boy Forever. <laughs> this came in the hobby box, but this card is a Vita cartridge label. They literally took a label from a uh, one of their Vita games, CSV games, and stuck it on this card. I thought that was pretty cool. So everybody that has this Vita cartridge label card may have a different variant of it. So I thought that was really cool. And when I got the hobby box, it came with uh, a patch. And these are just some duplicates that I have. And, you know, now that I'm collecting these cards, I kind of wish that the games that I sold, uh, the limited run games that I sold in the past, I kind of wish I kept those cards. But no, I sold uh, the cards along with the, the game. This binder here was like 10 bucks and it holds like 80 cards. Uh, so I'm already got it almost filled out. And I think that when I buy stuff in the future, I just might buy a card pack as well. Uh, just because I think it's fun to collect uh, cards. I haven't collected cards in a really long time. We'll start with the one PS4 game I got from Limited Run. And that's of course Devil's Tilt. Of course I had to get Devil's Tilt um, when I found out there was gonna be a physical version of it. And this, I got the, the pack with the soundtrack. So, I don't know if I'm going to open up the soundtrack. Um, I might as well. Alright, so we got the soundtrack here. Let's open it up. Just the CD. Nothing special. It doesn't look like that's a booklet. That's just an insert for the cover. Is there anything below this? Oh, a little bit. There's kind of something there. It's not much of anything, though. And I would have bought a Switch version of this. But there was only a PS4 version, and if they, there is a physical Switch version, I might buy that. Even though I have it on Switch digitally, I also have this on uh, Steam digitally as well. So now I have it on Steam digitally, Switch digitally, and a physical version on PS4. Do I really need all those copies? Uh, no, not really. But I don't know if there'll be another physical release of this. So got this just to get a physical release. What is under here? Oh, look at that. It's like you could do a reversible cover with this. And you know what? I just realized there's no manual in here. Usually, limited one, you get a manual. But sometimes like, you don't, I think. And I don't know if it just, I guess, depends on the type of release it is. Uh, now that I think about it, did I get a card with this? Oh yeah, I did get a card with this. Um, that's the card right there. All right, so we're on Switch stuff from here on out. Here is Drive. I guess I just this seemed interesting and it was an unusual packaging for this one which is why I went ahead and bought it. I think it's a steel book but uh, I don't really know much about the game. I think I looked at the trailer and it's like huh that looks interesting and then I bought it because the thing is like if I wind up not liking the game I can just sell <laughs> sell this on eBay or something like that and I've done that with a lot of the limited run stuff. I only keep the stuff that I really really like. The good thing about the physical stuff, if I bought this digitally, I'd just have it digitally forever, even if I didn't like it. This is the kind of thing that I think I was trying to get away of from because uh, I might have bought this standard edition if I if it was today rather than the Steelbook version. Because look at this, there's oh I guess you do have the name of it on the side here. I like Steelbooks and all, but it's kind of redundant when they give you a, a regular. <laughs> Oh, this is sealed too. <laughs> when they give you a regular game, a re regular game box on top of the steel game box, steel book game box. Because now, since this is all packaged together, I'm going to wind up just keeping them all in that box. But let's see what's in here. All right, drive. Oh, look at this. There's no manual, but we get a. <laughs> this is a uh, air freshener for a car. It's pretty funny. <laughs> there we go. There's our drive air freshener. Oh, look, I think that's even the back of the car, the front and the back. That's pretty funny. Yeah, but it'll just stay in here forever, I suppose. And I wonder if this is a reversible cover because I see drive on the spine there. Here's our steel book. I do like steel books, but honestly, I think the best ones are where you get the steel book and then you get a slip cover on top of it that's kind of clear so you can still see the steel book, but it protects it as well. Yeah, and there's our inside artwork. But since I'm not really using the steel book, I just have it. You know, I wonder if there was another, I wonder if there was a standard edition of this. I don't know. There probably was, but I wonder how much I paid for this. But I'm going to look up how much I spent for this one. All right, I looked it up. The standard version of this was $29.99. The Steelbook version that I have here was $39.99. So it was only $10 more, which is probably why I went for it. And I was actually looking at my orders and I still got a lot of limited run stuff coming at me. Uh, just because every time I look at something, it seems interesting. I'll buy it. <laughs> and um, 
it's not a whole lot of stuff these days, but it's enough to where maybe I'll buy one thing every, one or two things every month from Limited Run. So next up, I actually bought these two together, Super Meat Boy and Super Meat Boy Forever. Now the interesting thing is that I was looking at the games on my shelf and I saw I had this one sitting on the shelf. I'm like, that's odd. Why would I have put this on the shelf, but not this one? And then I went through the stack and I was like, wait a minute. I already have a copy of this and it's limited run. It's like, what in the world? I think they did something they said they would never do. And I think they re released Super Meat Boy twice. as a, This one as a re-release because they're both number 28. The back is exactly the same, but uh, the cover is completely different on both of these. And... Um, this isn't just a reversible cover because this has a different cover on the inside. So I don't know if I'm, I'm not going to open this one up because I already have one opened up. I might sell this um, online. I don't know. Or because it is a different variant. I don't know if I want to keep it, but um, we'll just put that as well. We'll put both of these aside. <laughs> After I filmed the video, I was trying to figure out how it was that I wound up with two copies of Super Meat Boy. And I figured out that the copy of Super Meat Boy that I had originally bought, I bought back in February of 2019. And even though it has limited run as the publisher on the cover, I actually bought that copy at Best Buy. So at that point in time, they weren't selling Super Meat Boy on their website. They were only selling it through Best Buy, and that's where I picked it up. And I think they may have waited until Super Meat Boy Forever was available so they could sell them both together at the same time. That's my only guess, and that's why it threw me off, and I bought the game twice. All right, so I don't think that these two uh, were actually bundled together and with one price. I think I did buy these separately. Uh, Super Meat Boy was $29.99, and Super Meat Boy Forever was $34.99. We'll just focus on Super Meat Boy Forever here and open that one up. There we go, and uh, of course we do get a ma manual here. A brief introduction to Super Meat Boy Forever. Not played this one, but I did like the original, so I figured, you know, let's get this too. Yeah, so there's our um, cards for Super Meat Boy, Super Meat Boy Forever. In fact, I don't even know if I got another card because I got the game twice. Maybe that one didn't come with a card. I can tell you that this is the card from the next one. This is X and Verge 1 and 2. So I saw this and I know that they were both really good games. Axiom Verge and Axiom Verge 2. All right, this Axiom Verge double pack was $49.99. I knew they were both good games, so I went ahead and bought it. So let's uh, open this up here. All right, there we go. We do have a manual for... Interesting. And, and we do have a reversible cover, too. It's a pretty thick manual. So let's move on. This is our last limited run game. This is Narita Boy. And this here is the card that came with this one. Now, I had funded this game on Kickstarter, and I actually funded it to get the PC version. Now, I have the PC version of it, but then it turned out that uh, through uh, Limited Run selling this, if you had funded it on the Kickstarter, you got a code that you wound up getting like $5 off on this one. Okay, I just ran and looked at the price really quick. $39.99, but the discount I was wrong, it was $5.99, so I paid $34 for this. Um, but to have a physical version of this, I could not resist because this is a fantastic game. Oh, kind of plain over here, plain, plain inside, but we get a little manual, and I don't think it's really a manual. It's just, well, I guess it's a manual. It is showing you what the buttons do. But yeah, this is kind of... Um, at least it's better than nothing. But but yeah, there we go. That's uh, what we're getting with Narita Boy. But yeah, this is a pretty damn cool game. All right, there is something else I have. I did get a package from Premium Edition. There are three Switch games in here, but I'm not gonna show them in this video. That'll be the next video. I'm There's a reason I'm doing this one separately, and it's because I, if I do a video on Premium Edition unboxing or whatever, I could get a patch for that. And I, even though I have four other Premium Edition games, I never really did an unboxing for them. So I'll show those off too in that next video, as well as you'll see what was in this box. So stay tuned, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>